a young man said to me, Bishop, I am losing my faith in God. I was surprised, obviously, with that affirmation and asked what was going on. And he said, Bishop, I have always been part of the church. I have tried to do things in the church as I learned. I serve and I am part of volunteering groups. I do volunteering works to help others. But there's one thing I've been asking God for years and he hasn't answered me. And I ask myself, why? Why? And I don't understand and this is bothering me. I'm realizing that I've started to harbor grudges against God. That's it. My response to him was this. Has he occurred to you? Has it crossed your mind that perhaps what you are asking for is not what God wants for you? In his infinite wisdom, he sees that this will not help you, will not be the best path for you as you think. Unfortunately, this young man's attitude is the same as that of many today. They think God exists to fulfill their desires. But then I ask you, pay attention, you, you, let me ask you something now, you. If you believe in a God who grants your every desire, who is the real God in this relationship? If you have all your desires, wishes granted, and this God, so to speak, only exists to answer you, don't you think that you are God? You only think that God exists to serve you, to grant your desires. So this wrong type of relationship, it's more common than you imagine, especially in a Christian environment, because many believe that God exists to grant their wishes, their desires. And this type of belief, thought, is a typical thought of a person who has only read the Bible in those parts that interested them. Actually, they haven't read, they heard of verses that appeal to human desires. Usually, are those who embrace verses such as the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, the Lord is my shepherd, and I've come that you may have life with abundance. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. They embraced these verses out of context and did not understand. They haven't put on the efforts to meditate and try to understand what these verses really say. They interpreted that all is about them, all about a huge TV screen in their living room or their bedroom. God will give me that television because I want, and they haven't understood not even the beginning of the gospel, of the word of God. The Lord Jesus himself, Son of God Most High, when was in this world, many other times that he said the same, but he said in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 30, he said, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. He did not come to do his will. 
Even so, we have that famous occasion that he prayed and said, Father, pass this cup from me, but let not my will be done but yours. And the Father did not spare him from the cross, but he asked. But it was not the Father's will. The Father's will was something else, and the Son, in complete trust, in the will of the Father, submitted to the Father. Amen. If I have to drink from this cup, let the Father's will be done. And at times we must drink the cup. It's like a child is sick and the Father gives the medicine on a spoon in the cup, small cup, and the child frowns turns their face away and say no and no, and the Father says, you must take it, you need it. God gave this cup to his only son, but he didn't frown, he submitted. So sometimes we have to drink from the cup. The cup that at first is bitter would do us good. So as in the case of this young man, who has been asking something from God, insisting on that and certain of it, not worrying if that was whether the will of God or not, but certain that that was His will, many put something in their heads and they don't want to know if that is God's will. They don't submit their request to God's will. They forget that in the Lord's prayer first comes let your will be done on earth as it's in heaven and later comes and give us the daily bread. But first comes your will. And this is what we must learn. And we need to learn to believe, trust without understanding, without comprehending why Sometimes, it doesn't seem to make sense, but we get the Bible and say it is written. Yes, it is written, but our understanding of what is written is something, and the plan of God is something else. Hasn't the devil used the it is written with Jesus out of context too? So what we must take for ourselves from this lesson from this word, the truth that is shown in the words that God's will is sovereign is that we must trust, even though we don't understand, we don't comprehend what is happening, we don't understand the no from God, we don't understand it, the apparent silence, indifference towards us, again, I say apparent, because God is never indifferent silent or deaf, but the apparent silence from God and indifference and lack of action means that he is doing something else that later on we will understand why he did not answer today. This type of faith is the type of faith of the highest quality, which is the faith that does not see, does not hear, does not feel it, does not touch, the faith that does not understand, but is the faith that trusts, trusts in the character of God, in the person of God, in His righteousness, in His virtues. This is the faith that the Lord is looking for. I know it is not easy. It would be wonderful if the faith was the type of faith that we snap our finger and things appear out of thin air. But if you stop and think, it's better not to be that way. Because if it was, we would be gods. But what God looks for is this. People have relationship with Him of children towards Father, servants towards Lord, those who trust in Him. And because of this trust, they know how to wait and trust. What comes from Him, whatever is His will, 
will be infinitely better than their own will. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.